Is it getting hot in here? Or am I just all sweaty from running around to weatherproof my house against yet another hurricane? And is that wildfire smoke? Lately, the weather's been so extreme, I've been feeling like I'm living in an apocalypse movie. But all these super intense heat waves, droughts, floods, hurricanes, blizzards, and wildfires aren't coincidences. And they're not the work of a vengeful god, a group of malfunctioning climate controlling satellites, or mutated neutrinos at the center of the earth either. They're thanks to human made climate change. There's a lot of information out there about just what people have done to the environment, and there's still tons of stuff we don't know. But the more we learn about what's going on with our climate, the better we can work together to create a healthier, less apocalyptic world. Hi, I'm Erica Brzozowski. This is Study Hall, and here are six things you should know about climate change. The first step to slowing down climate change is understanding what it is in the first place. When we say climate change, we're talking about long-term shifts in climate and weather patterns. I don't mean that one unseasonably warm November weekend when you have to break out your shorts and your flip-flops. Climate change is measured in decades, even centuries. And while the planet has gone through previous periods of warming and cooling in its long life, lately, things have been really heating up and fast. We call this global warming, and it's one huge part of the broader climate change our world is facing. And unlike the climate fluctuations of the past, this time it really is our fault. As humans have burned more fossil fuels like coal and oil to power our societies, we've also released more gases like carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. In fact, we know from looking at ice core samples that we've raised the levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere by 50% since the Industrial Revolution started in the early 1800s. The problem with more CO2 floating around is that it turns our atmosphere into a kind of greenhouse holding hot air in. And just like greenhouses keep out of season tomato plants toasty and warm, greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide keep our planet warmer too, in a process known as the greenhouse effect. And while global warming is just one part of climate change, it's closely tied to all the other aspects, like melting polar ice and rising ocean temperatures, stuff that puts all of Earth's inhabitants at risk. The precise ways climate change affects the planet are as vast as Earth's oceans, which are only getting more vast as sea levels rise, thanks to, you guessed it, climate change. That's because pretty much all of Earth's systems are connected, so an environmental change in one place can impact others all over the planet. Take those rising sea levels. Warmer temperatures are melting more polar ice sheets, which means the world's oceans are getting filled with more water, causing sea levels to rise. This puts coastal communities and habitats at risk for flooding. In fact, scientists estimate that about 800 million people living in 570 cities are currently at risk from sea level rise. And don't think that means you landlubbers are safe either. As people from coastal areas move inland to escape rising waters, it puts strain on cities and environments hundreds of miles away from the nearest coastline. Climate change is also disrupting weather patterns around the world. Places that used to get lots of rain, like the Amazon rainforest, are now getting less precipitation. In fact, in 2024, the Amazon River Basin reported the lowest water levels in 120 years, wrecking havoc on the natural processes of the animals, plants, and communities that have called the Amazon home for millennia. And the Amazon isn't alone in its dry spell. Climate change is making droughts 20 times more likely no matter where you live. And when the rain does come, it's more extreme than ever. Warmer ocean temperatures are fueling more powerful hurricanes, and muggier air over land makes thunderstorms more intense, which can lead to flooding. Severe winter weather is increasing too, as increased moisture in the atmosphere leads to more snowfall. And we're not talking about a little more rain here or a few extra snowmen there. In 2023, the United States experienced 28 weather-related disasters, each causing $1 billion or more in damage, an all-time record. And the effects of climate change can actually lead to more climate change. You've probably heard about the plight of the coral reefs. Thanks to warmer, more acidic oceans, 
coral in places like the Great Barrier Reef in Australia is dying off. But in addition to being home to 25% of all marine life, coral reefs also filter contaminants and pollution out of the water, protect coastlines from the effects of all that severe weather, and work as carbon sinks, storing up some of that CO2 that's causing our climate problems in the first place. So as our oceans heat up, not only are Nemo, Marlin, and Dory losing their home, but like a pufferfish rolling down a hill, climate change itself is accelerating as there's less coral to store CO2, meaning more gets released back into the atmosphere. Obviously, something has to be done. So in 2015, 196 countries got together in Paris, France, and ate a bunch of baguettes and cheese. I mean, made a pact known as the Paris Agreement. They promised to set new greenhouse gas targets that would limit global warming to below 2 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial averages. That number isn't random. In 1988, the United Nations formed the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to learn more about how climate change was affecting the planet. They found that an average increase in temperature above 2 degrees Celsius would create a snowball effect, where environmental changes would begin to pick up speed exponentially. And although the countries in the Paris Agreement have a shared goal, their specific mitigation targets and plans look really different nation by nation, because every place has unique needs and challenges when it comes to climate change. These individual climate action plans are known as nationally determined contributions, and they include things like target years to become carbon neutral and percentage goals for decreasing emissions, but also plans for training government employees on climate change and mitigation policies. Achieving big goals like the NDCs laid out in the Paris Agreement may seem daunting, but people and governments are making some real progress. For example, in 2023, renewable energy generated 30% of the world's electricity, a new record. And having cleaner power sources means other eco-friendly energy transitions have a bigger impact, like electric vehicles or EVs. There are also initiatives to help businesses figure out ways to do their work more sustainably and mitigate the effects of climate change. This might look like using more recycled materials, conducting life cycle assessments to see how products are used and where they end up, and adopting more eco-friendly manufacturing processes. All this progress is great and worth celebrating, but it's just the tip of the iceberg if you want to keep having icebergs and biodiversity and, you know, a livable planet. While the work we've done so far is a step in the right direction, scientists believe that the NDCs in the current plan aren't actually enough to stop us from hitting that 2 degree warming mark and need to be updated and strengthened. Part of the Paris Agreement was for countries to reevaluate and update their goals every five years. That means in spring 2025, countries will be required to submit new NDCs with a goal that each updated round will be even more ambitious than what came before. But to really win the fight against climate catastrophe, everyone has to get in on the action. And while some businesses are willing to hop on board the sustainability train, powered by green energy, of course, others are still busy putting profit before the planet. For instance, a report released in 2023 found that 93% of US companies state that they're working towards net zero carbon emissions. But the report also found that 58% of those same companies were lobbying against governmental policies designed to tackle climate change. And even some politicians aren't buying in when it comes to saving the planet. During his first term in office, the US President Donald Trump actually withdrew the country from the Paris Agreement in 2020. And although his successor, Joe Biden, immediately rejoined upon his inauguration as president in 2021, Trump was reelected in 2024 and has said he plans to yank the US out of the treaty once again. So while humanity has made some progress, there's a hell of a lot more work to be done if you want to do fun things like continue existing on planet Earth. With all the truly terrifying results of climate change looming large, it's perfectly normal to be a little freaked out when we think about the future of humanity and the planet. In fact, around 64% of people in the US say that they're worried about the climate. But for some folks, around 9% of people, that worry is so strong that it impacts their ability to focus or think about other things. They might start to experience symptoms like depression or intrusive thoughts. This is known as climate anxiety. When it comes to the actual effects of climate change, while we're all at risk, people of color and other marginalized communities around the globe are getting hit the hardest. This includes people in countries like Chad, Somalia, and Syria, places that have done comparatively little to contribute to the climate crisis in the first place. And in the US, 
forty percent of Black residents live in areas with projected life-threatening temperature increases, compared to thirty percent of the general population. And if you face the devastating effects of climate change head-on in the past, you're far more likely to experience climate anxiety now. But the most important thing is to keep working towards positive change rather than feeling hopeless or paralyzed. As individuals, communities, countries, and the world, we can worry about the climate while still envisioning positive futures, setting goals to achieve them, and working to meet those goals. While a lot of the work to fight climate change lies in the hands of governments and businesses, there's a whole lot that individuals like you or me can do without running for office or snagging a job as a CEO. Making small shifts like biking or taking public transit when possible, buying secondhand or sustainably made products, supporting pro-sustainability politicians, donating money or time to sustainability organizations, or getting involved in local park cleanup can help you feel more empowered and less helpless. Plus, it can help start a whole sustainability trend, inspiring others to get involved too. Before you know it, your own individual action has become a whole system of its own. Maybe not quite as powerful as the oil industry, but getting closer. The fight against climate change doesn't have to be a weekend warrior activity either. In fact, sustainability works best when we include it in our professional lives, too. For some of us, that means earning a degree or a certification in sustainability, or going into specifically sustainability-focused jobs like green urban planning. But the truth is, every job is a sustainability job with the right mindset. Encouraging your office to use less paper, switch to energy-efficient bulbs, or cut back on work-related air travel can go a long way to make any job more green. The point is that even small changes can make a difference for our communities, as well as the world as a whole. So now that you know a little bit more about what's going on with climate change, hopefully the world feels less like an apocalypse movie and more like a very serious but by no means hopeless environmental crisis which is what it is. So go forth, shop sustainably, hold businesses and politicians accountable, weatherproof your house, and don that bike helmet with pride. Because everything looks better when it's green, from your bike gear to government decisions to our planet. If you're interested in taking an online sustainability course for just $25 and unlocking the chance to earn college credit from ASU, check out our gostudyhall.com or click on the button to learn more. And if you want to help us out, give this video a like, comment, and smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.